Welcome to Lagoon Suit Better TV, where we provide you with bite-sized segments that help you do your lagoon better. I'm your host, Patrick Hill, and my co-host here, Brady O'Leary. Hello. We're here today to talk about wastewater lagoon aeration. We're going to talk about the purpose of aeration in your lagoon, and the difference in efficiencies between the technologies you, you might be looking at, and then we want to review a few different common technologies out there. Lastly, we're going to introduce a newer technology uh, that you may not have seen before. So when we talk about aeration, you know, we, we look at the EPA's definition of aeration, which is both to add the necessary oxygen to water so that the bacteria have the oxygen to breathe and respire and break down the waste, but also to create mixing. Mixing is what gets the oxygen, the bacteria, and the food all together. So it's very important. Right. It's really interesting that they describe it that way because it's a very common misunderstanding. All the time you hear about aeration is only about adding oxygen to water, and that's, that's just a misunderstanding. It's, it's uh, without mixing, essentially. If you put all the air into one spot in your lagoon, if you're not spreading that air around so the bacteria and waste aren't, aren't contacting each other, you're, you're limiting the efficiency or the treatment performance of your lagoon. You're not utilizing the full volume by getting air throughout the entire basin. So mixing is key. And we're going to look at three different types of technology, right? Uh, we're going to look at fine bubble, coarse bubble, and surface aerators. And we're going to evaluate their mixing capabilities, their oxygen transfer efficiency, and ultimately their operation and maintenance uh, th th associated with those systems. Okay. And when it comes to one of those items, the oxygen transfer, uh, there are a lot of different terminology or terms out there for, for oxygen transfer or efficiency. You've got SAE, SOTE, SOR, AOR, ORP, you know, you have a whole bunch of terms out there. We're going to focus on just a couple of those. Uh, generally speaking, you may have heard SOTE or standard oxygen transfer efficiency. And this is, you, get, you have to remember that this is just a measure of how efficiently we're, we're transferring air from the inside of the bubble to the outside. It's not a measure of cost efficiency, it's just how quickly are we transferring air from the bubble to the water. And that's really important to note because, you know, people talk about efficiencies in terms of this SOT and these get bantered around, but really SOT doesn't really equal energy efficiency by itself, you know? You could, in theory, have a very high SOTE but need a lot of horsepower to get that oxygen actually in the water. And what we care about when we talk about efficiency is energy efficiency. So what we like to use around here is what we call standard aeration efficiency. And that's SOTE with considering horsepower at the same time. So that tells you how many pounds of oxygen per horsepower hour is, is being put in the water by this particular system versus that particular system. That's what really gets you to your energy efficiency, which is the key topic everybody wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about mixing too. Your lagoon is designed to be one giant volume. It could have 1 million gallons out there. We've seen lagoons that are as big as 65 or 100 million gallons. That's a lot of water and you've got to keep this mixed up to keep that oxygen spread throughout the entire basin. If you look at a surface aeration facility, we'll say your average 250,000 gallon a day facility might have five or 10 motors out in the surface of the water. They mix really well at the surface where the propeller is or where their, their, their motor is um, because you got a lot of turbulence right there. Unfortunately, that doesn't work very well the deeper you go. You're essentially trying to force air down uh, and mixing down and that's difficult to do. And what's more, this is limited to only five or 10 points out on the surface of the water. Uh, your lagoon is huge and you're only mixing in these discrete areas. When it comes to fine bubble aeration or coarse bubble aeration, it mixes quite a bit better because it's a different principle. We're not trying to move the water with a uh, motor and propeller at the surface. We're pumping air into the bottom and passively releasing it. Uh, so what this does is it mixes from the very bottom of the water column all the way to the surface because obviously the bubbles go up. And the other side of this is that we've got significantly more points of energy distribution out there. You might have five surface aerators, but we could have 25 aerators out in the bottom of this, whether coarse or fine. Uh, so you're spreading that mixing energy from the bottom through more points of your lagoon. And all that mixing, you know, and when we talk about whether it's at the surface or it's at the bottom, it's also related to efficiency. So going back to standard aeration efficiency, when we compare fine bubble, coarse bubble, and surface aerators, what, what they really require horsepower wise, i.e. energy wise, to put oxygen in the water. So when we compare those, you know, surface aerators, because they're at the surface, are doing the least amount of aeration, uh, really, that they can be done because they're trying to, to churn up the water right there at the surface. So you typically only see about one and a quarter to, to maybe, you know, two or two and a half 
pounds of oxygen per horsepower hour for a surface aerator, which isn't particularly efficient. Then when you take a step up and you say coarse bubble, well that's sitting on the bottom. So that's using gravity and the bubble to transfer oxygen to water from the bottom to the top. So you typically see about two to three horse pounds of oxygen per horsepower hour. Now if you go to fine bubble, you see even better because you've got all these little small bubbles, right? And, and you're trying to diffuse these bubbles. It's almost like you're trying to create like a fizzing action in the water. And if you have all these small bubbles, collectively they have a lot of surface area, so they can really efficiently transfer oxygen to water as they're rising from the bottom to the top. So they get, you know, four to seven pounds of oxygen per horsepower hour. So clearly the most efficient, 60% more efficient than surface aerators and 40% and more efficient than coarse bubble diffusers. The problem, of course, with fine bubble is when you've got this fizzing effect going on, you're really not trying to create turbulence and mixing. You want to avoid having turbulence and mixing because if you get those bubbles to coalesce, to come together and create turbulence, then they'll be less efficient at transferring oxygen to water. So it's almost contrary to the whole purpose of mixing. Right. And coarse bubble, on the other hand, is great at doing at mixing. They add lots of turbulence to the water, the big bubbles, they rise to the surface with a little bit of a fury. Uh, but because they rise so fast and because they're so big, most of the air is trapped on the inner part of their volume, meaning you can't transfer that air that's trapped in the center of that bubble to the outside fast enough because this thing's just rocketing to the surface. So you're a lot less efficient. Mm -hmm. Coarse bubble's great at the mixing aspect, really turbulent, but up to 40% less efficient than the fine bubble. Mm -hmm. Right, and then now moving on to operation and maintenance. So obviously we talked about uh, horsepower and, and you know, if you have fine, you're gonna use less horsepower than if you have coarse. And if you have any fine or coarse, you're gonna use less horsepower than if, you, if you've got surface aerators. So that's good, but what about from a maintenance point of view? You know, when we talk about maintenance, you look at a surface aerator and you've got all these different motors that are on the water. You know, a good friend of ours, Jerry Shell, who does all the oxygen transfer efficiency testing in the country, he said surface aerators are a self-destructing piece of equipment. And I've seen that. I've seen that out in the water. And I, every time I talk to operators that have surface aerators, they just kind of smile and nod their head when they hear that because they know that. You've got to pull these units in. You've got to lubricate the bearings. You've got to, you, you've got to maintain them. And maybe you've got eight of them out there relative to a finer or coarse system where you've got two blowers which are sitting on shore, which are easier to access and fewer motors to maintain. So it really does help you uh, from a maintenance point of view. Right. And maintenance for diffuse aeration in general is significantly easier. Easier. All moving parts are kept on shore. So you don't have to get out there in the middle of the winter to pull something out of the lagoon because some flap or something broke or some bearing froze. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, at the end of the day, though, you're putting something in a lagoon, whether it's a surface aerator or you're putting in diffused aeration at the bottom, you've got to maintain these things at some point. Stuff's going to grow on whatever you put into a wastewater lagoon. So from a diffused aeration standpoint, uh, especially fine bubble, we recommend pulling these devices out, uh, inspecting them every couple of years, a cleaning every three to five years, and an eventual replacement in five to 10 years in your average wastewater lagoon. Coarse bubble, on the other hand, Really, it's a pipe with holes in it a lot of the right. time. So it's very simple. It doesn't need to be maintained as very often. But again, the biggest drawback to coarse bubble is the efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, so I think when it comes down to it, you know, fine bubble tends to be where the industry tends to be going. Coarse and, bubble's a little outdated. And coarse bubble tends to be yeah. you know, people, what people are trying to get away from for those energy benefits. Right. So we took a look at this, and to introduce that new technology, we took a look at this a long time ago and said, how do we do this better? There are compromises with coarse bubble because it's not very efficient. There's a compromise with surface aeration because it's a lot of maintenance. There are compromises with fine bubble because you're not getting the mixing out there that you need. So we took a look at this and invented something a little bit different. Uh, I've actually got a little bit of a, a model here. Uh, we just glued this together. It's 3D printed. Isn't it cute? Uh, it's a very, very small model. Actually, the full scale, if you look at these diffuser arms, is actually about that size. So this is a really, really little model. And as a little tangent, I'm actually trying to get a whole bunch of these printed. I'd like to get, uh, you know, I'd like to be able to give these away. I mean, wouldn't you want one of these in your desk? Throw some pens in there or something like that? I think it'd be kind of neat. Anyways, so what we're doing with this is uh, we're trying to harness the benefits of all of these aeration technology types while not bringing along their compromises, right? So we have a fine bubble 
fine level diffuser here. And with this, we transfer oxygen very efficiently as we just talked about. But we've also included a coarse bubble static tube mixer. And what happens is, as, as coarse bubbles rise through here very quickly, they'll pull water from beneath the unit and propel it up through this hollow chamber right in the center. And what this does is this helps us to add mixing. So what we're doing is we're chasing this EPA definition of aeration by adding oxygen to water and mixing it throughout the water column so the bacteria and waste are constantly in contact. And it's portable. It's dropping from the surface. So in five to ten years, when you do need to maintain the membrane, you can pull it up from the surface and drop it right back down, uh, stays where you put it. So if you're interested and you're looking for a new aeration system, our MARCH system we feel is a really good option. Feel free to come onto our website, uh, download our literature, uh, reach out to us if you've got some, a project you want us to look at. Um, but we've also got lots of other resources. You know, this is our Lagoons Do It Better TV channel, but we've got a blog, and we've also got, you know, in addition to our YouTube channel, our Facebook group, where we're trying to connect operators with operators to help so that you guys can all help each other make your lagoons do it better. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, if they go on and they do, they subscribe to the blog and uh, you join our community on Facebook, Lagoons Do It Better, and let us know about it on our website at uh, tpenv.com slash LDIB or Lagoons Do It Better, uh, we're giving away these hats to people who think just like us. Uh, nice little uh, mossy oak, I'm told, uh, hat. So come on and uh, check it out. And if you've got any questions that you want answered, you know, we would love to answer them. So please reach out to us, comment on this video, post on our Facebook page, or contact us on our website. We're always looking for new ideas for new topics uh, to, to, to produce these, uh, those, these video blogs with. So thank you much, very much for your time, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.